drum up, Baku crew, because it's time for another deck profile. I'm Baku Brad 96 bringing you the first Bakugan Evolutions deck profile and the first requested one at that, which I am super excited about. Pyrus Platinum Dragonoid was certainly worth building a deck around, but before I get ahead of myself, I'd like to take the time to thank my Baku crew for the tremendous amount of support I have and am continuing to receive. As of recording, the channel is right at 380 subscribers, a mere leap from 400. Not only that, but currently 8% of you watching are now subscribed, and that's 2% more than last week. That is the kind of growth that I love to see. I know it's not much, but growth is growth, and that means more of the Bakugan community is supporting me, and that is all that matters. Thank you all so, so much from the bottom of my heart. You know the continued support is just going to drive me and push me to continue making you guys awesome, amazing content. By the way, don't know if you can tell from the lighting, but I did get a new tripod with a new bright uh, white light camera thing. So hopefully that will improve the quality just a little bit more as I continue to grow and improve the channel. Now, let's jump into the deck profile. So Pyrus Platinum Dragonoid is certainly the star of the show. I don't have um, hardly any evolutions Bakugan yet. In fact, two. Just the, uh, the Dragonoids, the Ventus and the Pyrus. So I did have to give Dragonoid the supporting cast from Geogun Rising, but again, the deck is built around Platinum Dragonoid, and we will go into that later on. So for now, Platinum Dragonoid has a Helix Core and a Green Fist Core, B Power of 500 with 1 damage, and if he ends up picking up a Helix and Green Fist Core, he gets plus 1000 B Power. So a lot, a lot of nifty tricks you can do here, and uh, we'll get into the math later on in the deck profile. But all you need to know for now is what a beast. And we will go ahead and pull out a gate card from behind the screen. And here is the Pyrus Platinum Dragonoid. Now in my earlier unboxing of the Ventus Platinum, its arms actually, ah, there we go. Okay, confirmed. So I was just kind of silly on the first unboxing, and I couldn't pop the arms because they were kind of locked in place. But here we go. So confirmed that the, um, was sorry, Evolutions Dragonoid Mold can move the arm just like the Geogun Rising one. Good to know that it was just stuck on my uh, last video. But moving on, we are using Ventus Sharktar. It has a Helix Core and a Green Fist Core as well. B Power of 604 damage. You kind of see where this is going. And here we have Ventus Sharktar. There we go. Head got a little stuck there. Finally, I need to grab the character card before I grab the Bakugan. It is Chaos Krakenoid. So the same core lineup of Helix and Green Fist. B Power of 400 with 6 damage. And if it lands on a Helix, it's going to get an extra plus 300 B-Power. So, not bad at all. And again, we are revolving it around Dragonoid, and that is why I picked the Bakugan for the cores. So it's just straight 3 and 3. It's the cores that he needs to get that plus 1000, and that's the whole point. But before I jump right into the core lineup, I forgot to show off the Krakenoid. I'm horrible. There we go. So there is the team. I have put Krakenoid and Vintage Sharktar in deck profiles before, so I don't really want to spend the time looking at them up close, even though they are awesome. Bakugan, awesome designs. Not digging them there. For the core lineup, the Helix core is... I don't know about this one, but I'm giving it a whirl. So I am using the plus 600 B power and minus 3 damage for good reason. Um, I will get into that again later on. I kind of can't explain the deck profile until I uh, get deeper into it. For the Green Fist cores, however, I use a plus 3 damage, a plus 100 B power, and then Pyrus Ventus get plus 3 damage. And then finally, the plus 100 B power, and then Pyrus and Chaos get plus 3 damage. So basically, the idea behind the core 
is with Platinum Dragonoid, you know, you have to have the Helix and the Green Fist to get that plus 1,000. You want to get your B power as high as possible to make it, you know, as competitive as possible. You don't want your opponent to be able to be you, especially after spending so many resources to get those core. So with the Chaos Faction in mind, I use kind of a core control domination idea strategy. But with the core stacking, I wanted to make sure that I could get the most B power possible without hurting the damage. And that is why I'm using these. So when these stack onto the Dragonoid, you're going to get 12, 2200, and instead of going negative on the damage, they cancel each other out, so you'll keep the one. You don't have to worry about minusing three, you don't have to worry about plus. They neg out, you're going to end up 2200 B power with one damage, and that's what this deck's going for. This is the main play. This is how you're going to win. I mean, yeah, you can bump up the other Bakugan, but the deck's not built around them. They're a little bit weaker. The Chaos Krakenoid has the added Helix buff, but that's not really going to get you as far as your combos with your Dragonoid are going to. So we're going to go ahead and get right into the deck profile. You know, I did I want to do a little bit of explaining there, but uh, it'll get more, I don't know, understandable as it goes on. So I do run a one of Mega Punch. One energy to attach a green fist from the field to an open Bakugan. Goes without saying, you want to grab a green fist, you want to slap it on Dragonoid as quick as possible. Had I had more of this card, it would certainly be in the deck. We do worry about where our core are on our Bakugan, so I do want to have three power ritual here. One energy, and it's going to give you an energy for each Baku core that your Bakugan hold. This is somewhat important in the deck's design, and I'll get into that further as the deck goes on, of course. Air Zero is going to be a way to cheat out some of our later higher cost cards. Two energy to reveal the top card of your deck, and if it is not a flip card, you may play it for free. I feel like this is a staple in Pyrus decks, but that could just be me. Following that, I do use two Pagu uh, Baku Fetch. Two energy for plus four damage, and then you can draw one for each Baku core attached to your Bakugan. So just a good way to cycle through the deck, you know, draw power and give you a decent amount of damage. Because Platinum Dragonoid, even with his huge buff, even with the combo, you are only sitting at one damage, which... I mean, you could win games like that, but you're just going to sit there and ping your opponent ever so slowly. We have Burning Bash next up. Two energy for plus four damage again. But this time you get to remove an enemy Bakugan's Baku core as well. And it has the Stoke, so you, when you play this card you can pay an additional 2 energy to gain its effect a second time. This card is scary, and with the whole idea behind the evolutions and the Nano God needing to stack multiple cores, you're certainly going to want a way to take those cores away from your opponent. Burning Bash does that, and I have so many more cards in the deck that can help. Helping with our own B power, however, is Light's Courage. Two of these, two energy for plus 400 B power. But if your Bakugan's holding the most Baku cores, you're actually going to get plus 800 instead of the four. And that is super. Again, we do have some higher play cards that we want to kind of turbo into later on in the game. So I am running two turn to energy. Two energy to simply energize the Sun Charged. Now we start getting into that fun part. We have two consort, as if you couldn't see this comedy. Like, I wish I had a third one. Three energy to attach a Baku core from the field to an open Bakugan. I mean, this is what the whole deck wants to do. Slap a helix, slap a green fist onto that platinum dragonoid. So, I mean, what better card to include? Same reasoning behind energy vortex, even though it is a Baku here. Three energy, when you play it, you can attach a green fist from the field to an open Bakugan. And it gives you an extra 300 B power on your Bakugan, so that does help too. Um, but again, just attaching Bakugan, that's what we want to do, and that's what this deck is focused on. After that is Fusion Super Saw. Three energy to draw one, and you may energize the card from your hand uncharged. Just a way for us to pseudo-turbo through our deck and get some energy cards out. 
It does have the Stoke ability, so when you play it, you can pay an additional 2 energy to gain the effect again, which could be broken depending on where you're at in the game state. Again, more high energy plays, so 3 Song of Fire, 3 energy actually gives you plus 5 energy. I really like this card. Again, arguably a staple in Pyrus, but could just be my opinion. Now here's where we get into those higher cost cards. 3 Jump Wave, 4 energy to attach a Bakugan from the field to an open Bakugan. That's really the only thing we care about on this card. But it does have the domination ability, so if your Bakugan are holding the most Bakugans at that point, you get plus three Frost Strike. The deck doesn't care. We just want to attach Bakugans where we want to attach them. But in the event that our opponent has the same strategy, you know, with Nanogon coming out, that is a worry. I did opt to run two Pyrus Overload, four Energy for plus 500 B Power. And then you remove all Bakugans attached to a Bakugan and place them onto the field. So that can help against our opponent's own Platinum Dragonoids per se or any Bakugan with those Bakugan stacks. Good way to counter Nanogon abilities as well. And here is the big boy of the deck. So kind of our huge hitter. Um, six energy, which is why Song of Fire is so important because this 6 cost card could be a potential turn 4 play. It attaches 2 Bakugans from the field to an open Bakugan. That is right. On turn 4, on your roll, if you can roll your Dragonoid, if everything goes right, you can have that 2200 B power, 1 damage right there. Because you could just attach the Helix and the Green Fist with this 1 card. Super easy, super simple, and I really like it. Um, yeah, Song of Fire, it, definitely worth adding, I'm telling you. Turn 3 gets you to 5 energy, super. Um, in the same respect, even though it costs a little more and it's later on in the turns, I am running 2 Bouillon Blast, 8 energy for plus 2000 B power and plus 10 damage. I don't honestly see playing this card, most of the time I imagine this is going to be put down as an energy but could you imagine putting 2,000 B power on top of a 22,000 Platinum Dragonoid going in for 4,200 B power? I, I didn't mean 1,000, I meant 100. But yeah, 4,200 B power would be sick with 11 damage. So that's kind of what why I put that in there, just as a what-if card. Now the last part of the deck profile is, of course, the flips, which is nothing special because of what it is. So we have Dazzle, zero energy to block a Bakugan holding a Helix. I mean, I run this one in almost every deck profile I make with Chaos, but now I actually have a reason to, because look at all those Helixes. We definitely don't want our opponent to have our Helixes, and if they do, we're going to punish them for it. After that, we have Web Snare, because our opponents could have other cores than we do. Zero energy to block a Bakugan holding a Flaming Fist. Running and Confused for the same reason, 1 energy to block a Bakugan holding a Flaming Fist or a Magic Shield, which we don't use. Constrictor on the other side of that coin, 1 energy and it blocks a Bakugan holding both the core we used, being a Green Fist and a Helix. Rock Riser, 1 energy to block a Bakugan holding a Orange or Magic Shield. And then finally wrapping up this deck profile, I do have 2 Fuel the Flames. Helping with that Bouillon Blast, the Baku Roll, all those higher cost cards. Two energy to energize the top card of your deck uncharged. And then it has the Stoke effect. When you play this card, you may pay an additional two to gain the effect a second time. So just a way to pseudo turbo some of those cards out. But uh, yeah, very interesting deck profile. So awesome that it was requested. Hopefully it was worth making. Um, it was a challenge. I'm still working on the, uh, the new strategies, but I think this is a good start for evolutions. And thank you all for watching. I want to remind everyone that to show your support simply by clicking that like button, subscribing, and make sure you ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content for the channel. Hope you all watching. Have a great day. And remember, Bakugan Brawl.